mum, 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 are we recording? Yes, yes, yes we are. Hello, hello booktube, it's Louise the Big Head, bookworm, lovely to see you, hope you're well, hope you're having a good day, wherever it is you're doing and whatever it is that you're doing, wherever it is you're doing. <laughs> it's been, I've said this beginning, I don't know how many times, once I wasn't even recording, good six to seven minutes of me chatting to myself. I have an organic coffee alternative in here. Mm, it's lovely. It's got hickory and chicory and all that kind of stuff in there, but it's very nice. Um, so, hello, I haven't been here for ages. I have recorded this beginning so many times. I'm just going to go with this one now. We're just, we're just going to go with it because I want to do other recordings as well. And if I keep faffing about the beginning, I won't get any of them done. So, hello, how are you? I am relying on natural sunlight just out there um, for my lighting because I couldn't be bothered to put up my... Um, lamp um because i thought if i faff any more i won't record it and i want to record things this afternoon so this is going to be a quick and dirty uh video which i will do a few little edits to to put up some books here otherwise it's going to go out in its raw and naked so so state oh put my teeth back in this doesn't bode well considering this is the first video i'm recording it makes me think that the last one's going to be right ropey but we'll go with it we'll go with it so this is a quick video that i am calling disappointing audiobooks because i have listened to quite a few disappointing audiobooks recently and I wanted to share them with you so that I can it's a public service basically so that you don't actually have to listen to the same disappointing audiobooks as I have been listening to so first one I'm going to start with oh yes first one I'm going to start with is a bit of a bit of a controversial one this one because I know it is quite a few people's kind of thing and that they really like and it should have been my kind of thing and I should have been raving about it and I think that's one of the reasons why it was quite as disappointing as it was is The Monogram Murders by Sophie Hannah. So I had this in physical form as a paperback. I think I must have been bought it. I don't remember whether I bought it myself but I think I might have been bought it. Anyway when it came out as a paperback it was very very big and popular Quite a lot of people said to me, because they know that I'm an Agatha Christie lover, said to me, have you read it? And I was like, no, but I will get round to it. And I tried. Oh, my word, I tried. I tried quite a few times and I couldn't get on with it. So quietly at some point I got rid of it. Or maybe I did tell you. I can't remember. It was so many years ago. I can't remember. Anyway, I kept being asked do you like the monogram murders by sophie hannah because so and so loved it or you know my husband loved it was somebody's response and i was like it can't be that bad if these many people are enjoying it and it's become a series now you know is it a case of i had too higher expectation i was wanting too much or was i expecting too much so i thought right i've got rid of it physically i will use one of my audio um, order bubbles credits and I will get it and I would listen to it because I listened to quite a lot of Agatha so I was like right this is it and therefore I'm not focused on it I'm going to have it in the background and I can get into the story and before you know it Bob's your uncle and actually Bob isn't my uncle but if Bob is your uncle I come to the conclusion that it will be great so therefore I did it I must have tried to listen to it about four times and then over the last three months I made a concerted effort and oh got through it I just didn't like it and on reflection it is the sidekick character combined with the narrator now I can't remember who the narrator is Julian somebody and it's the him and the sidekick so it's narrated by a character called Catchpool, who is a detective inspector from Scotland Yard. And he brings Poirot into the murders, which take place in a hotel called the Bloxham Hotel. And it's and he was just irritating and I didn't get on with him. I didn't like the character of Catchpool. I didn't like the way that the narrator said his name, Catchpool. And you know when you get a, a verbal, you hear a verbal tick, 
And it becomes one of those things that you focus on. I focused on it. I focused on it, people. I kept trying to tell myself not to focus on the fact he said catch pool. But he does say catch pool. And by the time I got to the end, I was like, Aah! every time he said it. The, the whole device of it, I didn't like. Now, I do find that with some Agatha Christie's. I'm going to be honest, with some, some of the Agathas, I go, oh, Agatha, not one of your best. But there's enough about the characters that I enjoy or the setup I enjoy or the period pieces. And this one didn't have it. It just didn't have it. And so I got to the point where I just had had enough. So I've read it. I am not going to read any of the others. I really am not. Even if they don't have catch pool, I'm not going to read any others. I'm going to just let this that series go. And if you enjoy Sophie Hannah's books, then then I am pleased for you. But I, as far as I was concerned, I found it to be a disappointing audio book. Yeah, quite frankly, I'll stop doing that now. So I've got a little list here, so I shall take that one. Second one was a non-fiction, because I do like my non-fiction audio books. I listen to them in the car and I listen to them, and especially if I can find one that um, is kind of memoiry and not sweary or technical, because I listen to it when Benedict's around, who is my 10-year-old son, if you don't know. And um, so it has to be family friendly. Has to be family friendly, because you never know whose ears perk up. And he's now at the age that he spots a swear word at 50 paces, and I said, I called somebody last week a Pratt. Yeah, in the car. And because I pulled in because there were cars coming in front and he obviously thought, no, 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 blonde woman, you are wrong. I'll come round and then cause a queue of traffic. Okay, I can tell, still slightly irritates me. And so I went, oh, what a Pratt. Benedict sat there, went, well, that's very rude. Can't call him a Pratt. I was like, Pratt? Pratt is mild. And he's like, no, that's rude. And so anything, anything vaguely sweary, anything vaguely, he's like, oh. And he said to me, and I was listening to something or watching something, what was it? And it had some bleeps in, because obviously they bleeped out the, um, the sweary nature. And he went, I think you should switch that off. <laughs> came into the room I think you should switch that off because it's far too rude and I was like yeah but they're bleeping it out and he's like well they're obviously saying it though <laughs> switch off all right <laughs> all right dad um so yes anyway I've gone off on a tangent so I like to have adult I like to have um family friendly audiobooks so that I don't have the 10 year old censor coming in and going oh we've got to switch that off because it's rude Right. So I listened to Waking Up in Paris by Sonia Choquette, who is a spiritual motivator, uh, motivator speaker and well-known six sensory, kind of six sensory um, writer. She writes a lot about angels and about guides and all things spiritual and multi-sensory work. So she's quite fascinating. She um is american but she had moved to paris and this is a memoir of her moving to pa pa paris paris with her daughter and how they got settled there and what it was like settling down there and the reasons why they did it and and how paris healed her in for want of a better phrase so it's quite it's a lovely it's a lovely so the idea behind it Perfect. I've never been to Paris. always want to go to Paris. And I thought, um, this is going to be me hearing about Paris and then kind of multi-sensory spiritual stuff and it's going to be inspiring. And I've listened, no, I've read a previous, I've read, I have listened to one of her other books and I've also read her book about um, walking the Camino de Santiago in Spain, which was, a, again, a spiritual journey. So I thought it's going to be like that. I really like that. It's going to be like that. no. No, she she had a bit of a rough time. So this is no spoilers. She had a bit of a rough time. And what she found it very difficult, her expectations of what it was going to be and actually what it was like. And she basically spent an awful lot of the time relating arguments. I mean, it's the worst thing for me. I, you know, people will come and tell you, won't they? They have an argument with somebody and they will come and relate it. But she is word by word, verbatim telling you these massive arguments 
that she has with people and how upset she was with them and how her expectations weren't met by them and how it was her fault because it was her, her expectations and on the other side, how rude they were. And one-off, you'd think, OK, that's fine. No, no, I would say a good 50% of the book was her being miserable, telling me about arguments. And I was listening to it in the car and I was dreading getting in because I was thinking, oh, Sonia's going to have another go about it. I'm talking far too much. Um, so I was like, oh, this is just terrible. So I listened to the entire thing. There are some one or two good nuggets in it. But you have to like somebody telling you about arguments. Oh, just, I was like, Sonia, love. And it's really put me off her. I've, I had so much kind of, I admired her so much. And I still do, but I wouldn't like to meet her now. I now think, you stay in Paris, love. <laughs> and I'll stay here and we won't meet. So, yes. Right. Um, oh, third one. Joined a, I've kind of got it, joined a new library because we're still within Cambridgeshire. But I've joined the local library but I, to all get some audio books from them. And actually, I found out it's the whole thing, Cambridge. And blah. So I all so I've been downloading some audio books, which is good because you can try different books, different things that you wouldn't normally try. But this is one I was so pleased to see. I was like, wow, oh yeah, no, I like this author. And it is The Word Is Murder by Anthony Horowitz. So I really liked the Magpie Murders. It took me a good couple of goes to get into it. I had to get to good page 150 onwards, um, which I only did because so many people said to me, you really should try it. You really should give it another go. And I'm like, I, I am nothing if not obedient. So I did and mm, loved, loved the Magpie Murders. No, no, not the word is murder. Not the word is murder. So it's nine hours long as an audio book. Um, I listened to two and a half hours so that's yes that was it two and a half hours so I felt I'd given it my go and it took me a while and the concept behind it is brilliant because he Anthony Horowitz is a character so it took me a while to realize this is actually fiction because it reads to beginning like non-fiction so he's contacted by a detective that he's worked with um as you know because he's a tv writer and it was somebody that he's used for getting um, you know, making sure that the police procedure is correct. And so this person comes. Now, the problem is, the problem is with this, that the character, Daniel, Detective Daniel, I'm just going to call him, I can't remember his name, um, is, 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 is irritating. He's, he's not, he's, the, and the character, Anthony Horowitz, doesn't like him and finds him really hard work. No joke. Listening to him, I was like, yeah, Anthony, I feel the same. And because you're finding him hard work, I'm finding him hard work, and I'm finding you hard work at the same time. So neither of them were characters that you wanted to spend time with. Now, I'm fascinated with Anthony Horowitz. He's just, he's brilliant. He's so talented and so multi-talented. And actually, if it was a straight memoir or a straight book by him, about him, I'd be fascinated. But this, which is actually fictional, just, no. No, <laughs> I was just... I, so I spent three, two and a half, excuse me, hours in their company, and I thought, I've had enough. I've had enough of. I've had enough of the bear review. So I've let that go back to the library. Let that get its wings back and fly back to the library. So I ch chose another one. So I chose something a historical um, fiction called *The Locksmith's Daughter* by Karen Brooks. Never heard of it, never read it. I wouldn't have picked it up except it was as an audiobook, it was free. An awful lot of the audiobooks were not available. Um, and I had to, I saw one I'd, I could wait until February to listen to. No. Um, so I thought, right, okay, well, I'll give this a go. So I've never heard of it. You know, it's a way of trying different people. It was 22 and a half hours long. So I thought, well, if I like it, then I'm I'm a happy girl for quite quite a while. To about 22 and a half hours, in fact. Um, I listened to three hours of it this morning. I suddenly thought, you know, you've given it your best. <laughs> you've done your bit, love. Let it go. It is, in fact, a disappointing audio book. I just did have enough. I just, I really had. I was like, problem is, problem is with this book, I didn't like the narrator. And that can kill an audio book, can't it? Do you not find? The other thing I didn't like about it was I didn't like the main character, Mallory. 
the locksmith's daughter. And it was slow. God, blimey. The first part was virtually one, was about four hours. Four hours long in story terms. And it was an awful lot about the fact that she didn't get on with her mum because her mum was, didn't like her. And things had happened. Um, set in, oh, sorry, I t- told you it's historical. Historical fiction. She's a locksmith's daughter. She's been disgraced. She went, she eloped with a chap, came back, got collected by her father. Being disgraced. It's in the time of Elizabeth I. I mean, I should love it. It's in t- Tudor times. It. Um, she's a phenomenal locks, uh, uh, lock, uh, lock pick. I don't know. Yeah, lockpick. She just uh, basically to test her dad's locks that he makes as a locksmith. She picks them, and she's become phenomenally good. There's no lock that can beat her. Does that not all sound fascinating? Yes, but Mallory is just the most irritating character, and it was so slow. It was so slow. I just thought. I thought it was going to be quite fast paced, and I think I had high expectations. It was going to be high, fast paced, and it wasn't. And Mary herself was a whingy so-and-so. I mean, I know hard times had happened to her. I got that. But, lordy, the more time I was spending with her, the more depressed I was getting. I was like, no, I'm sorry, Mary, you're going to have to go. And actually, isn't this fortunate it was a library book? Because then I could say goodbye to it. So I did. And there we are. And that's it. <laughs> so, four books. Wake it, so, The Monogram Murders by Sophie Hanna. Waking Up in Paris by Sonia Choquette. The Word is Murder by Anthony Horowitz and The Locksmith's Daughter by Karen Brooks. Those, as far as I'm concerned, are all disappointing audiobooks and I don't advise you listen to them. However, if you do listen to them or you have listened to them and you've enjoyed them, then please let me know. I would love to hear from you. And let me know your last disappointing audiobook so that I can avoid it when I'm looking on Audible or from the library. Well, this has been lovely and I look forward to speaking to you again very soon. Bye!